Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. .org. Podcasting and streaming around the globe, it's the In Wheel Time car talk show. Just ahead, the best cars for the money awards from John Vincent with U.S. News. John. We need more Jeff with six military vehicles that anyone can own. Yes. You're going to love this. And later, we're going to talk about the Texas Muscle Car Club Challenge with Sarah Vidreen. It's all just ahead of this segment of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us on this rainy Saturday. It should be tapering down out there. Yeah, it's still kind of chilly. Kind of like that uh, dampness in the air. It's a tweener right now. Yeah. Going from bad weather to good. So we have to have that little tween time. I wouldn't call it good. Just okay. Well, it's supposed to be nice this afternoon. Uh, That's what they're saying. Well, it's supposed to, but it ain't got there yet. I just looked. John Vincent is joining us. John, a pleasant uh, Saturday morning to you, sir. Hello, John. Good morning. Hey, it's great to see you again, and thanks for uh, getting up and and putting up with us. Fortunately, it's not too early here on the West Coast, so uh, we're good. Eight o'clock. Good. Yeah, Yeah, we were talking uh, to uh, a friend of ours, uh, and he was out at Pomona with the hot rod show that's going on out there at the fairgrounds and uh you know maybe you guys could all get together but you're kind of on a different kind of level than he is with the hot rods because you're talking about new cars and best cars for the money awards by u.s news and i can't wait to get into this where do we want to start well let's just start a little bit about uh, what these awards are all about um you know, we kind of follow the rule at U.S. News that you cannot buy, you cannot get a good deal unless you're getting a good car. So our best cars for the money awards, they honor cars and trucks and SUVs that, um, you know, might not be the cheapest to buy initially, but over the first five years, they're going to be the cheapest to own. So we look at um, our scores. We look at transaction data from True Car. We look at five-year cost of ownership. Uh, data from uh, Vincentric and come up with uh, 11 award winners across the industry that uh, should give you, you know, years and years of low cost, trouble free service. That's good. Where, I mean, did you see in this, now you've done this in years past, uh, I assume. Yep. Yeah. And did you see a pattern from year to year with certain makes of cars? Where you know one yes. one make actually stood out, and if it's uh, number yes. one, if it's number one, just hold off on that, and let's okay. start let's start with the, at the bottom of the list. Okay, so all of these cars came from three brands. Let's start at the bottom of the list: three row SUV, Kia Telluride. Oh, the Kia okay. Telluride. You know, I've had one uh, in in the press fleet, and I will tell you that I liked it a lot. And I was skeptical at first, and, and I'm sure that your research has probably uh, actually said the same thing. You know, it's like the Kia Telluride, really? But then after you drive it, you go, wait a minute, this is really a nice car. And then all of a sudden, everybody else starts picking up on it, and you see a lot of them out there now. So apparently, we kind of had a hunch that this might be a success for them. It's been a great success for them. It's been out for, you know, a few years now, and they still can't meet demand. It's wow. still going great. Yeah. And I assume that part of part of these awards are also the reliability factor. Yes, that figures into that five-year cost of ownership. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that figures in big to that, and you'll see that trend in this list, is um, Telluride and all of its uh, Kia um, siblings. 10 year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. So, not and if something breaks on it that's in the warranty, clearly you don't have to have a out of pocket expense. And if from my experience, generally speaking, Kia and Hyundai both build a pretty darn good car. I think that uh, you don't offer that warranty unless you don't have to. Because right. if you need that warranty, you're going to drive your 
you know, business into the ground. Um, but yeah, the Kia and Hyundai have come up to the level of Toyota and Honda, um, and in some ways succeed them. Yeah. Well, I've always been a, a fan of both brands, and mainly because of the price. Uh, because generally speaking, if you put it head to head with any of the other ones, it's going to come in, generally speaking, lower uh, initial cost to buy one. True. Um, I mean, that's changing a little bit. They're getting up on par with uh, with Toyota, Honda, and Nissan. But um, yeah, they're they're generally a little in- less expensive, unless you're buying a Telluride because they're still in fantastic demand and they're still getting a lot of money for that car. Yeah. Okay, what's number four? Let's look at two-row SUV, the Honda Passport, car right behind me. Um, Passport's been around for a while. Um, It's not the most inexpensive vehicle in that uh, segment, but uh, it does everything it needs to do and um, has shown itself to be reliable for the first five years, at least, um, according to Vincentrix numbers. So those overall costs in the first five years are are lower than... uh, other cars in the segment. I have never heard anybody that has ever owned a Honda complain about it, ever. <laughs> and I, I actually, years ago, um, right at the beginning of the Honda Accord fame and fortune, right. um, I bought one. And I will tell you, it was a great vehicle. Never cost us any problems. I will say back in the day, the only thing that cost me money was that I had to have the timing belt changed on the engine. That, yeah. And it was not cheap uh, to have that done because yeah. I think you had to tear off that front half of the motor. But um, that was my only complaint with it, but it never really gave us any problem. And that was part of ownership, like brake pads. You had to change the timing belt in it. But uh, the Honda Passport, I've never heard anybody complain about it at all. Yep. You know, let's talk about that Accord because it's the winner of our best uh, mid-sized car for the money. Wow. Well, that doesn't surprise me. And, you know, back in the day when I had mine, this was back mm, probably 1990 or so. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Did you did you just did you he, just give me a little smirk he there? Coughing. He was just coughing. Uh, yeah, just to clear my. <laughs> it was throat. only thirty years ago. Give me a break. <laughs> I will tell you that it has grown like old fat people. It's got it's gotten it's gotten big, man. It wasn't that size when it started. So yeah, I'll make you feel better. Uh, my first Accord was an '83. Okay, that was my first. Car. See there, so, Mars. Mine was a 2003. We bought it because we were. Going back and forth with San Antonio a couple of times a month. We wanted something reliable, something we could put a lot of miles on it, keep a little bit of resale. Ended up giving it to the granddaughter, and somewhere around 250,000 miles, it left the family. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, yeah. yeah my, my Accord was smaller than today's Civic by a, yes. a good, uh, <laughs> that's, good distance. That's correct, man. You know, Back then, as is today, I, it was it was a very popular size. Now it's grown into a huge family car, but I would say that it was somewhere between a small and a mid-size car back then. Yes. Yeah. You know, Something Camry like size that. and all that. In fact, my daughter just bought a hybrid Accord about two months ago. Nice. She's loving it. So let's yeah. talk about number three on the list. Um, let's talk about another Honda. A Civic um, is the best um compact car for the money now would that be the four-door civic are That's they the all civic line you know overall i got you okay all right the honda um, civic another great car in an extremely competitive segment i mean it's the segment has corolla in it kia forte in it hyundai elantra um some really good vehicles in that segment but yeah. uh the just civic, about every brand's in there yeah just about every brand every foreign brand yeah. Um, not uh, the big three aren't in that segment anymore. Yeah, that's because they're big. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's uh, switch to SUVs. All right. Subcompact SUVs, and some people won't call this an SUV, but uh, we have it cate- categorized as an SUV. Yes, Soul. I have always liked, always liked the Kia Soul. Yes. And and but. Say what you will. I don't care. I like the way it rode. The power to weight ratio is very good in it. It handled great, and it was handy. 
Exactly. Not a fan. Exactly. The, not the, a fan. the sole, you know, it rides low, so it's really easy to load and unload. Um, you know, we lost the, the uh, turbo in it a few years ago, so it doesn't no longer available with the turbo. But still, it's, you know, efficient. It's, it's a great commuter car, city car. Um, that has some utility on the weekends. Well, uh, Jeff says, oh, no. I, I, yeah, I'm not uh, a fan. Did you ever ride one? No, I have I just don't one? like, I wouldn't get in it because I just don't like the styling of it. Well, well, that's but, okay. But, but that styling, I think, is what makes it, to me, much more functional than some of the other vehicles because the access to the cargo area in the back or folding down the seat, it does set a little bit lower. It, it just, you're right. It, it just, like you say, it's handy. It's handy. I don't know how else to put it. It might not be on the you know most beautiful list but to have a car like that i mean look at the other ones that kind of tried to compete against it they didn't make it yeah i right. think that nissan Ni- cube is I remember that remember that weird thing the nissan cube yep and then the Cyan xp the other boxes that yeah, yeah yeah and that was the uh that was the brand that didn't make it from toyota and they touted that and tried to make that work. And I think that when the, it was time for a model change uh, with those, uh, where they updated it all, they ruined it. And it just it ruined its quirkiness, and it just didn't look right, and it never did survive. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so ki- <clears throat> you know, It's a bad sign when you know you bring out a car intended for the younger set, and you find most of them being, being towed behind RVs. <laughs> that's right well it's, now you're talking it's kind of like corvette drivers you know who's driving corvettes these days well old gray-haired men the only people that can afford them well that's true and, that's and they're, they're affordable when they get to be like the age of mine right um uh, you guys want to drive the new corvette the new e-ray is fantastic uh, have you driven really? it i have i can only I'm imagine actually- I actually got to drive it um, because I'm a juror for the North American Car and Truck of the Year Awards. Oh, you and Jack and, Nerad. Uh, yep. I love that. And, um, <clears throat> you know, imagine a Corvette that you can drive in the rain and it goes in a straight line when you when you jump on it. In the well, rain. Yeah. So they've, they've perfected that to computer control traction. Yeah. That's what they've done. It's, okay. it's all-wheel drive. Yeah, well, there's that. But you know what? As I was told years ago when I started doing press reviews of, of cars, you can't fix stupid. And people people have a way to be stupid yeah. when it comes to horsepower. All right, so what's number one, John, of the Best Cars for the Money Awards? Okay, we didn't rank it as a number, you know, rank it 1 to one to 11. We looked at it by class. So okay. let's okay. look at um, um, hybrid car. Hybrid. Along, hybrid. Yep. So everybody thinks of the um, the Prius when they think hybrid, but the Elantra, you know, it's a uh, it's a sedan, so it has a little bit more you know utility for some people. It uh, um, it tends to be a little less expensive than the Prius, um, you know, rock solid car. Um, let's hop into hybrid SUV, Kia Sportage Hybrid, uh, that competes with. Um, some really popular SUVs, the that, RAV4 and the CRV. That's a little bit bigger than the RAV4, though, isn't it? Uh, Sportage is about the same size. Is it? Yeah, the Sorento is the one that's a little bit bigger. Ah, that's what it is. Yep. And along that same line, best plug-in hybrid SUV is Sportage plug-in hybrid. Hmm. Yeah. So John- uh, compact SUV, kind of on the same theme, um, Hyundai Tucson. And, you know, affordable to buy, 10-year warranty. Um, that's a common thing with uh, Kia and Hyundai, Genesis, and Mitsubishi vehicles. Is they all come with 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. I like the styling of the Hyundai over the others that you mentioned. I think the styling of the Hyundai is, is good. It's, it's attractive, and it's an eye-catcher. Hyundai is an interesting brand when it comes to their styling because unlike a lot of other manufacturers that have a family look, Hyundai gives most of their cars different looks um, on the front end. Right. Kind of like the difference between an Impala and a Nova. Two completely different looks. Yeah. Well, I'm going back a few years. I had a Nova. So forgive me for that. But you get the point. (laughs) I'm sure you're talking about the real Nova and not the... 68, uh, 69, somewhere around there. 
Not the one that was built by Toyota. No, 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 no. yeah, the, the old school 60s. stuff. Yeah, yeah the anyway, twos. but we don't want to get off track here, so continue on. So um, the last one on the list is uh, the best minivan for the money. All right. And that is the Honda Odyssey. Oh, I would think Toyota would beat that. So another competitive set. You have the Kia Carnival out there with its fantastic warranty. You have the Chrysler Pacifica, which is available as a plug-in hybrid. You have the Sienna, which is a hybrid and also available with all-wheel drive. But um, our numbers show that the Odyssey comes out in, on top and has for several years in a row. Wow. I like the Toyota the Toyota minivan. I've sat in them, uh, in fact, at the auto show recently. And uh, I like the styling. I like the way the dash is laid out and the whole configuration of it. So, What, what, does, what does our engineer have? Is he on a, a Honda or does he have a Toyota? It's Odyssey. Honda Odyssey. Honda and Odyssey. He's, he offered me to buy that. I said, I got eight bucks. You want it? You know. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, well, interesting. It's an interesting list. I would have some I would have picked, but others it's like kind of surprising, like the mm -hmm. Kia Soul. Yeah. Yep. I yeah. inexpensive to buy. Yeah. Inexpensive to own. Now, where can our viewers and listeners get more information on this? Just go to usnews.com and click on the cars tab, and you get to our auto section. Um, you know, we don't. We don't just have car reviews there. We uh, we show you how to buy a car, uh, when to buy a car, where to buy a car, and um, you know take you through the whole process of getting a car loan and and getting getting into your car. We love talking to you. We thank you very much for joining us today. Best Cars for the Money Awards, John Vincent. When are we going to see you again? Let's talk again uh, next month when we'll be talking about best cars for families. All right. Perfect. Just in time to start hunting for that summer vacation car. Exactly. John, it's great you. to see you, my friend. Take hey. care of yourself. You too. Take care. All right. John Vincent, U.S. News. Good stuff. It is good stuff. And speaking of good stuff, we happen to have a little featurette that Mr. Jeffrey Zekin has oh. put together for us. Okay. We always need more Jeff. Sure. Jeff presents the six military vehicles any civilian can own. Now, whether you can fit them in the garage or the driveway or really upset the homeowners association, here we go. Well, it's a matter of Mike's got grandchildren, I've got grandchildren. You, any one of these you could buy for your grandchild. Oh, you just and, gotta and have. I got a means. couple of them that would love yep. to have one of these. <laughs> yeah, it, lo it looks like uh, one of those uh, police things that yeah, they do with the SWAT scene. So this one here is called a Jeep Kaiser M715. It's introduced in the in the mid '60s, and it replaced the M37. The M715 is a hauler with increased mobility and low capacity, despite its initial modest reception by the military in the beginning. Uh, it, over the years, they kind of grew on everybody, and for those interested, the M715 is available for approximately $8,000, but you're probably going to get it in a condition that you're going to have to rebuild it. So some of these things, and in fact, most of them, you can get them pretty cheap, but you're going right to have to. Oh, 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 I'm oh, back. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, that particular vehicle... I don't know what you'd use that for unless it was some sort of landscaping deal or something. You could, or camping. You know, maybe That's take what the, I was thinking. Maybe out take the, the woods. Boy yeah. Scouts, Girl Camel Scouts out. Okay, yeah. so yeah. I'm going go to I'm gonna yeah. go up to the, uh, the, uh, the, right now. the National Forest, and it's going to take me an hour to get up there. Mm -hmm. What kind of mileage did that thing get? It doesn't say. And, uh, you I really can only imagine. Yeah, it's probably going to be very, very poor. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they even counted that back no, then. No, not in the day. No, but more by God, when you put your 100 gallons of gas in the thing, uh, you'll be counting it. Well, don't forget they're military vehicles, so they were more for on either defensive or offensive and, you know, terrains and things of that nature. So this one is a Paramount Marauder. The Marauder is a robust military vehicle designed for reconnaissance. Didn't Mitsubishi build a Marauder? Uh, uh, no, it did. That, what it is Mitsubishi? that thing got on top of it? Is well, some sort of bird or... <laughs> I think a it's, plane? It's an antenna. It's Superman. If they use these for UN peacekeeping missions and the ability to carry 
10 men and handle up to 13,000 pounds of equipment, which means everyone's mother-in-law could go for a ride. Uh, a double-skin <laughs> monocoque hull provides protection against small arms fire. That's why it's a military vehicle. It's available for purchase. Uh, civilian There's some purchase. places here in Houston that you could use that at midnight, yeah. 2 o'clock in the well, morning. Look at all the people in the background. They're using it someplace where they're having yep. a party. This yeah. is available back in 2008, and it's recognized as one of the coolest military vehicles to buy. Those people are running for their lives because they see the drone on the top <laughs> of that know. thing. I don't know. Take one to Granberry. That'd be awesome. Wouldn't it? Okay. This next one we have is called a Hawkeye. Now, this Hawkeye is basically an Australian-type vehicle. Uh, it's a next generation and protection vehicle. Offers versatility as a 4x4. Four four, four four. I like the sunglasses yeah. that it wears. With a 3-ton uh, payload, its adaptable configurations include troop carrier, staff car, command and control vehicle, reconnaissance vehicle, and electronic warfare platform. You can buy this in just about every country there is, as long as they're available. I think I like it. How it's much a, is it? It doesn't say, but you can get it probably beat up and ragged out for around ten grand. So you see the guy standing back there behind to give you an idea how yeah. tall that thing and is. And there's also a guy in a, a walker, so he's... he's <laughs> there is a guy in a walker. <laughs> So Wait, gonna... I reckon it's me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, this one is pretty uh, bad to the bone. It is an Elvis stalwart. Wait a minute, Elvis. Elvis, not Elvis. A L V I S. It's his cousin. <laughs> it's his cousin Elvis. <laughs> it's cousin Elvis. <laughs> this amphibious <laughs> cargo vehicle produced in the UK entered service in 1966. How the hell do you steer it? It's got six wheels on it that are all so close it, together it was, you can't turn them. It was initially designed for supplying forward units with fuel and ammunition. It could carry troops and cargo. Top speed on land is 40 miles an hour and it can go in the water seven miles an hour it's a vehicle it's a vehicle that is available for civilian purchase so there it's you go. the new duck it could be yeah it's very possible and then moving on to this one this one's a a, a little different this is called a tucker Ooh, snowcat yeah operating from the tucker snowcat corporation it's a terrain vehicle specifically designed for military transports, cargo, tactical work for the U.S. military. I know a guy that uh, that, that flies uh, around the country, mm -hmm. and on his sideline job is running snowcats. Katie needs one of these. Katie needs one Katie of those. Katie needs one of yes, these. Yes, she does. With no consistent price uh, on these things, because there's variations of it with the different tracks and availability, it's estimated to fetch around hundred grand on average. Offering a unique option for those seeking tracked over snow vehicles. Hey, honey, let's go down to the Whataburger and get a snow cone today. <laughs> Load up on the tracks. Okay, another favorite of mine coming up is a Patton M47 medium battle tank. Now we're talking. We're talking. The M47 battle tank is part of the M Patton. Patton uh, General Tank Series served as the main battle tank during the early years of the Cold War. Uh, originally designed, Mike, for military purposes, it is available, duh, military purpose, available for civilian purchase, provides enthusiasts with an so opportunity that to own. Be, so that would be, let's see, that would be post-World War II. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it, it did see service. It did see service. And you see, obviously, this is in an, in an area of a Can museum. Can you imagine going up to the Dairy Queen? Hey! <laughs> I'll take a dip cone, make or, it chocolate. Or you're in my parking spot and you lower the gun turret down there. <laughs> just roll over the whole car. Now, my favorite, and this is a little tip of the hat to the automotive show. <laughs> Mike, this one is cool. You know I always talk about submarines. Well, this one has a special meaning, Mike, because this is a whiskey-class submarine. There you go, Mars. Used during the height of the Cold War, the whiskey-class submarine was a Soviet threat and operated under more than 40 nations until the 90s. With a lasting design and operability, these submarines can be purchased by civilians, Michael, with the right license, knowledge, and operational space, typically around a half a million bucks. So Lake Conroe would never see one of these. You don't know that. Well, you never know. It could be one under there right now. <laughs> it could be. You never know. Because you know, periscope. in the middle of the lake is really, really deep up there. Yeah. And in the middle of the lake, there is a railroad track. Did you know that? I did not know that. There Underneath? Is. Yes. There, there are maps that you can buy. They're uh -huh. available online or wherever, wherever fish are sold. <laughs> and they have uh, the terrain of uh, that's underneath the lake. 
I and did Lake, not know that. Yeah, in Lake Conroe, there was actual there were houses and all sorts of stuff down there. Well, isn't there's a lot of debris in general in that lake, isn't there? Well, debris, but I mean originally when they dammed it up at the end, it was at the it was it was a part of the San Jacinto River. Huh, and it was headed, that. yeah, headed down through there. And they said, hmm, we just put a dam here and hold back the water. And that's why they have to release during the certain storm seasons. Yeah. I'll be darned. Mm-hmm. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, there you go. You can buy them. I'm full of so useless you, information if, and other things. If you've got a, a young student graduating school, you might want to look into one of these vehicles. Graduation presents. There you go. The now, submarine. The majority of them are, are kind of beat up. and you gotta, fun that would be? Can you imagine? you got to rebuild it. We're, yeah, no. Uh we're going to have a high school graduation party, and everybody's invited on the submarine. There you go. Uh huh. We're going to Galveston. Or we in a completely did, different did, style. White Oak Bayou. <laughs> Didn't you tell me that's a whiskey class? Whiskey class. Yes. Whiskey class. There you Just go. Just my style. That's, that's exactly. what I thought of you, and I put a bonus in there. <laughs> oh lord. That's yeah. All right. Well, interesting stuff. You can I know. Buy them. Well, that was a very yeah. interesting uh, story. Um. I'm going to throw this little story in here right. real quick before we uh, take a break. Despite federal efforts to fill in charging infrastructure gaps and make electric vehicles cheaper for consumers, U.S. car dealers surveyed by Automotive News say they're worried the Biden administration is forcing the industry to move too far ahead of market demand. Thousands of dealerships have urged President Joe Biden to reconsider the proposal, which could be finalized as soon as March. But that it's the proposal that, you know, we're going to have limits on vehicle tailpipe pollution for 27 to 32 model year cars and light trucks. So everybody's try, trying to get ahead of the game yep. by trying to sell EVs, which could be finalized as soon as March, arguing it would mandate an unrealistic shift to solely battery powered vehicles before the market and infrastructure are ready. Most of the survey dealers, nearly 55%, said EVs were not generating customer interest or sales at their stores, with some citing affordability concerns or a lack of inventory. It just ain't there, friends. Yep. Wow. Anyway, uh, the In Wheel Time Car Talk show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. We also uh, are on YouTube, uh, InWheelTime.com, and podcasts can be uh, had from your favorite podcast provider. I lost my place. Okay, subscribe to. The In Wheel Time Car Talk show continues right after this quick break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station. Located just around the corner from Kyle Field, it's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It too's on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tint, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? 
In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit godsgarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.